Audrey Parvis was turning 10 this year. May 8th was on Sunday, and it was Saturday afternoon. Audrey had been a terrible person at dropping hints. Her mother brought her to the 99 cent store, letting her choose out her own birthday present. Now, just look, look around and let me know if you see anything. I'll be looking at novels over there, her mother told her. A knickknack here, a curio there, it was a quaint little shop. Audrey didn't know what to get. There were so many things to choose from. She just settled for a stuffed rabbit toy that she saw in the window's display. An old beautiful Victorian doll with brown hair and brown eyes with a red dress and blue trims. Oh, she's pretty, she said in awe of the beauty of the doll. She happily skipped over to her mother and brandished the doll. Miss Parvis raised the doll up like Audrey did. Wow, something like this in a simple 99 cent store? You could buy it, dearie. She handed it back to Audrey, who ran to the old cashier. I'd like to buy this at all, please, sir, she asked politely. The old man squinted at the doll and said, Oh no, you wouldn't want that doll. Confused, she asked, What? Of course I want this doll. He shook his head and said, Well, alright, but his next words were mumbled under his breath. She took the doll off the counter and held it into the Miss Parvis and paid for a few books. On the way home, she couldn't stop looking at the doll. Such ornate features done with perfect accuracy. She, such a beautiful doll needed a name. Molly, Molly is her name. She hugged the doll tight on the way home. Upon even closer inspection after arriving home, she noticed a flaw. Molly had an extra finger on her right hand. Audrey pinned this as weird, but nothing is perfect. After playing with the doll for an entire day, it was bedtime at 9 o'clock. The doll was porcelain, so she left Molly in the living room table to play with after breakfast. Her mother kissed her goodnight and walked downstairs to her bedroom. Audrey had lovely dreams. Her playing with the living Molly in a meadow and dreams such as that. Then she awoke hearing clacking tiny but audible clacking footsteps. They grew in volume, sounding like they were getting closer to Audrey's room. Then there was a high-pitched mumbling. Audrey stopped whimpering and listened closely. First step, Molly's on the second step. Molly's on the third step. Refusing to take any more, Audrey yelled out, Mommy! Mommy, come quick! The tiny footsteps pattered away, and Miss Parvis rushed into her daughter, daughter's room. What? 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 Mommy, I heard footsteps, and I think it was Molly. Her mother sighed, unhappy and being woken up at 11.15 at night. She took Audrey and turned the light in her living room. Molly hadn't moved an inch from her position. Audrey unhappily went back to her bed as her mother left to rest. She managed to get about 30 minutes of rest before the sing-song chanting and clacking returned. The chanting continued past three. Molly's on the fourth step. Molly's on the fifth step. Molly's on the sixth. Calling her mother again, Audrey insists that she believes it's Molly who's making the noise. Another checkup on Molly reveals no change. Audrey Victoria Parvis, I am really getting tired of this act. Molly is a doll. She cannot walk, she cannot talk, and there's nothing to be scared of. Audrey looked uneasy at Molly. The longer she stared, the more Molly's expression looked malicious. I have to work over not over time tomorrow and you have daycare so please sleep and forget about Molly she'll seem less scary during the day uh, oh 
All right, mommy. She usually climbs the stairs to her room and lies in her bed. She manages to get some sleep. When the clacking and chanting comes back, it exceeds the six steps and continued. There were only 12 steps to her room. Molly's on the seventh step. Molly's on the eighth step. Molly's on the ninth step. Mommy! She couldn't help yelling out. Her mother didn't respond. Molly's on the tenth step. Molly's on the eleventh step. Mother! She screamed out. Silence in this response. Molly's on the twelfth. There was a silence in those heart pounding seconds, but the doorknob jangling broke the silence. The door cracked open. There stood Molly, holding a steak knife, all bloody. Audrey scrambled under her bed, hoping Molly didn't see her. Molly killed your mommy, now Molly's gonna kill you. She grabbed Audrey by the hair and pulled her out from under the bed, pulling the knife towards the crying little girl and said, Molly's in your room.